Welcome to Let's Get Writing. I'm Katherine Taylor, and I'm so happy to be here. This show is a show about writing, the processes and all its forms, the wonderful ways we can express ourselves through words, whether it's in music or books or drama, whatever. And I always try to bring guests to you that have something to share, and today is no exception. My guest, first book was long listed for Canada Reads 2021. And the past few months have certainly been an exciting time for him. He grew up in Alberta, but now lives in the backwoods of Cape Breton. And I've even been where he lives. And with his wife, cartoonist Katie Beaton, and she actually did the cover for his book. Let me just show you that just while we're talking about it. There it is. Now you're getting warm. You kind of know who I'm talking about now. <laughs> this is a good hint. Uh, he also lives with Mary the baby and a bunch of other critters. His resume is as entertaining as his books, and I can't go into all that, but you can read it on his website, morganmurray.ca. But he does include, it does include a Master's of Philosophy in Humanities from Memorial University of Newfoundland. And I have to mention that because I'm here in Newfoundland. I'm in Grand Falls, Windsor. So we got to pump the Newfoundland universities. And according to Morgan, his writing has been rejected by some of North America's top publications. I love his sense of humor. He calls this his loser tour. But boy, I think he He's certainly not a loser, as I'm sure you will agree with me. And uh, we're going to learn all about how Dirty Birds came to be. And let's uh, get rid of this picture and bring Morgan up to the screen and uh, welcome him to the show. I'm bringing the wrong picture up again. Oh, there we are. We've got three of you. We're all here. We're Hello. all here. <laughs> the Dirty Birds, too. Hi, Morgan. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You're over in Cape Breton. You're halfway. Uh, you're you're farther on the route to Toronto than I am. I'm. I didn't make it off the island yet. Not this trip. <laughs> so gradually, we're all going west. It seems like. <laughs> well, it seems like. But you started out there. You started in uh, Saskatchewan. I Alberta. believe it. What Alberta? Close. Close. My protagonist in the book starts in Saskatchewan. So. That that's Look what up. I was thinking about. Milton, Ontario. That unlikely. Harrow. Um, I got to tell you, I mean, I read the book. And I was, there were times when I wanted to just take Milton and just go, if you were my kid, <laughs> <laughs> wear clean socks, for God's sakes. <laughs> oh, Milton. Oh, don't sleep on a mattress <laughs> that's been like heaven only knows where. Didn't I bring you up right? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, he's a character that you love, but I think also at times I was so frustrated with decisions that he made, but they kind of seemed to turn out fairly well for him a lot of the time. So Morgan, I gave people a little overview of you and just to give them an idea and, and you have a wonderful sense of humor. Um, was it always your passion to be a writer? Um, um, maybe. Uh... My first passion uh, growing up was to be a uh, famous NHL hockey player, and I'm Ooh. still waiting for my phone call. I got a few <laughs> years left in my knees, so if anybody needs a badly out of shape player, <laughs> I'm available. You're there. Um, hey. <laughs> so that never panned out, but um, at the same time, I was always very uh, uh, passionate about writing and drawing and art and, and things like that, and and. I grew up in a house with a lot of books and my mother would read to us every night. And the way our house was configured when we were small, um, me and my brother shared a room and it was kind of adjacent to my sister. So my my mom would sit in the hallway and read us the novels that she loved when she was a girl growing up. Um, so all those novels about horses dying. Um, and so even to this day, if my mother starts reading even the attacks letter in the mail on the phone i'll zonk right out of sleep um <laughs> and then my first big break as a writer i wrote a uh novel length um story in grade two called chester harry dong and jack get the bulldog bullies it was a story about how some uh fleas helped some cats out 
with some dogs um, and it won a contest of some kind. And, and they had this thing in Alberta at the time in the community I was in called the Young Authors Conference. And so I got to go to this Young Authors Conference and it was a big, big deal because we got to go to, a, got the day off school. We went to a different school and we got to meet different writers. And I learned how to write haiku in grade two at this thing. Um, but the most memorable thing was we got chicken nuggets for lunch and that was very exciting. <laughs> and so that was kind of the start of my writing career. <laughs> I, I think you should go back and resurrect that book. It might make a great children's book. Um. I found it uh, when I was going through some stuff recently, a few years back, and um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the important point is, Morgan, that it set those seeds and those programs that we have in our schools or those opportunities for kids to experience readers and coming into the school when they can and writing and, you know, which I find so often now the arts are just an afterthought and it's, you know, it's sad. So those programs, look at the impact it had on you somewhere. Absolutely. That stage oh and the NHL <laughs> career. <laughs> Gave me a backup career choice. Both of them yeah. are kind of uh, foolish to bank on, but, uh, One's worked out better than the other. <laughs> yeah, it has. And, and speaking of that, I mean, it, you know, Dirty Birds has really taken off for you. And it's a first book. And that doesn't often happen. So it has to feel good. I mean, you, you must be feeling good and maybe like, okay, what next? <laughs> I'm in shock. Um, I didn't think anybody other than my mother would read it. And uh, we sold out of the first print run after the Canada Reads list came out. And... Um, I've got to do a whole bunch of events of Grand Falls, Windsor today, and I've been in Milton, Ontario, and Calgary, and uh, Saskatchewan, and you name it, um, on this virtual tour, and I've gotten a lot of great reviews and a lot of great reader feedback of people sending me notes saying how much they enjoyed the book, so um, it's just so gratifying to know that there's people out there actually reading your books and, and things like that, so it's been really exciting, and I it's totally exceeded all of my wildest hopes and dreams for a first book that I kind of, you write it in, in, by yourself in a little room and you have no idea if it's any good or not, or if anybody's ever going to read it or not. And then to have it turn out as well as it has, I've been blown away by all of that. Well, you know, you hit up on something. Writers do sit there by themselves and write books and wonder, is this going to come across? Is, is this going to work? So for you, like, what was that period of time? How long did it take you to to uh, create this novel? <laughs> Depends Ooh. when you want to say, when did it start? So um, a lot of it is based on my own experiences of moving from uh, the backwoods of rural prairies after I graduated um, from the University of Calgary. I moved to Montreal to become a famous poet like Milton Ontario yeah. in the book. Um, I didn't like Milton Ontario in the book. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, I had a lot of interesting experiences, and I lived in a really dumpy apartment. Uh, my bedroom had a window. Um, poor Milton, his bedroom doesn't. That's no. pretty much the only difference. There's, there's not a lot of uh, – <laughs> it was a bad apartment. <laughs> it was very cheap. Um, I brought with me – I had the foresight, and my parents raised me right, so I brought an air mattress. Except <laughs> okay. uh, my roommate's cat scratched it, so it had a slow leak. So every morning I'd wake up cold and on the hard <laughs> floor for a few months. Oh, um, I love it. Well, that's how we get some of the stuff that Milton, you got the feel for it. So <laughs> don't let me interrupt you. Just tell a little more about it. I'm, I lo I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I made this, uh, moved to Montreal, met some characters, made some bad decisions. Uh, did a lot of interesting things for a few months while I was fun employed. Um, and then my money ran out and I had to get a day job and, and then things kind of returned to some semblance of normal. Um, so that was kind of when the material started percolating in my mind and it was 2007. So everybody had a blog then um, because Twitter and Facebook and iPhones and all that stuff, they were just getting started then. Um, so I blog about some of these experiences, which ended up, um, pretty much copied and pasted into the novel. Um, and then I moved to Newfoundland to go to graduate school. And, and like a lot of people on my uh, two year trip to Newfoundland was nine years long. 
Um, <laughs> but I we have I, that effect. Yeah, it's the uh, the unofficial tourism motto for Newfoundland mm -hmm. is uh, "Come for the scenery, stay for the fog." Uh, <laughs> you'll get. Oh, there. hey, I gotta say something. You talked about fog and badger, and I was like, "No, there's no fog in Badger, Morgan." <laughs> <laughs> I take I take exception to that. I live in Central Newfoundland. I don't know when I've seen fog. <laughs> Central Newfoundland has actual somewhat reasonable weather. Uh, the yes. ends of the land have, have a hard go. Um, they do. <laughs> so it, it took a long time for to live that life. Um, and then when I was in Newfoundland, I kind of fell in with a group of really great writers. And, and St. John's is a wonderful, small, big town like that where you can um, meet and get to know and befriend people like Lisa Moore and, and Sharon Bala and some of these really great writers. And so I took a workshop from Lisa Moore. And uh, she said, you have to write things and I need to read them. And uh, that scared the bejesus out of me because I'm so intimidated by her. She's such a brilliant genius, mm -hmm. and a wonderful writer and human. Um, and so I just started writing scenes from my Newfoundland or, or my Montreal time. Uh, I just made a list of 50 funny stories I could tell and just started writing them um, and submitting them to her. And she was looking at them. And she's like, what is this? Is this a story or is this a novel what are you doing here and I'm like oh well, maybe it's a novel and she's like well where's the conflict and the characters and what all this stuff you need in a novel it's like i don't know what i'm doing i'm just here so <laughs> and then um the slowest students in her workshop uh, we we stuck together afterwards and formed a, a writing group and so it became the port authority writing group um, which was, includes uh, myself and Sharon Bala, who wrote The Boat People, which is an international bestseller, and she's uh, skyrocketing to fame, and it was on Canada Reads. It wasn't a loser like mine. Um, Jamie Fitzpatrick is another writer. He's from He hails from Gander originally, but he's on CBC sometimes, and he uh, wrote a novel recently. Uh, Susan Sinet wrote... Um, I love Susan. She's in her 70s and she's lived her career and raised her children. And I think her grandchildren are getting up there now, too. So she always wanted to write. And so she joined this workshop and then fell in with us, a bunch of hoodlums. And uh, she wrote her first no novel. I think it came out when she was 72. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. Susan, to give your age away, but it's so inspirational just to see it. And it's called Catching the Light. And it's a young adult novel that's done really well. Uh, Melissa Barbo wrote The Illuminated Sea, which is another breakwater book, which had done really well and won a bunch of awards and stuff. So um, somehow we all got together and, and held each other to account to write. And uh, we did. And novels started coming out of it. Amazing. Well, you fell into a better group than uh, Milton <laughs> did. And you, and you know, it's so true about Newfoundland. For our population, we have so many people in the arts, in writing, in music, and it, it, it's exceptional. And uh, I have to say, when you created your character Naughty, and I'm not sure what Naughty's based on, but he's sort of that, the worst of that breed of kind of the boozing, sex smoozing, <laughs> Neanderthal, like he's just a mess going through and poor Milton is like just going in his wake and <laughs> Naughty is, I mean, he's just, uh, I don't know. He's just like that. I think we all kind of know parts of Naughty and maybe we kind of know parts of Milton. And one of the questions I had was, you know, is there some of you in Milton? And I think you've kind of answered that, that yeah, in ways that there, there are parts of you in Milton. There's more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, I, I love and hate Milton. <laughs> um, Me too. Me he, too. <laughs> that's good. He, he, it's based on a lot of my own experiences. And, and um, like I said, I took some blog posts. So I had a roommate from Newfoundland for a little while um, who was once upon a time a strip club DJ in St. John's, allegedly. And mm -hmm. he was quite a character, not a naughty character. Naughty's a Newfoundland stereotype turned up to 11. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. very much a satirical character. But um, my real life roommate had this kind of underground construction company that I worked a few days for. And 
Um, I blogged about it at the time, and that scene in the novel where Milton goes to work for his roommate is pretty much verbatim what happened that day until the fist fights and dog chases and car chases break out. Um, so yeah, I just I took a lot of my own experiences. It's my first book, so I, I felt comfortable writing about places I've lived and experience I've lived, and then just kind of adding foolishness and absurdity to them. Um, and it was also kind of, I don't know if cathartic is the right word, but um, part of the book is about how um, people my age, I'm in my mid, late 30s now, getting later by the day, um, <laughs> we're, we're really the first generation where we've had to go to university in order to get decent careers. Um, I still don't know if I have a decent career. I have a good job, but I don't know if it's a career. But um, like my parents graduated high school and have pretty much had the same job for 40 years. And they're just right. retiring from those now. Um, I was an intern when I was 30. I had my 30th birthday and I was still an intern. <laughs> and so um, it's changed the whole way the world is for a lot of people, whereas um, my parents, again, my uh, dad grew up in town, the, the village of a couple hundred people, and now the farm is four miles outside of the village. And my mom, grew up two miles up the road. So they've moved between them <laughs> six miles in their life and have had the same jobs yeah. for 40 years. Um, but I knew when I graduated high school, I had to leave my community. I had to go to the city uh, to get an education. And then once you get off the farm, it's hard to get back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you bounce, and you're also, we're also part of this generation where we're told, oh, be whatever you want to be when you grow up. Um, yeah. mm. And so <laughs> our minds are, <laughs> poison by this, uh, this hope and optimism. And so I'm one of those parents. <laughs> yeah, well. I said that to my kids. It's partly true. Um, yeah. But you, you have to leave your little small podunk town and you go to the big city and then you get into all of these hijinks and stuff and it just sort of prolongs adolescence um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And so you don't have to grow up until you're like 30. Um, and so what happens during those 20s, that's, you know, you have 12 extra years that your parents didn't have to fool around and be Absolutely. a teenager. And so I wanted to write about that period and that sort of phenomenon and how there's sort of this existential crisis that goes on for 12 years where you try to figure out who you are and what you're supposed to be doing with your life because it's not as straightforward as it was for your parents' generation. And so it was kind of cathartic in that I got to beat up on my former self for all the bad decisions I made. <laughs> so, um, but you know, it, it beats therapy. <laughs> it, I don't know. You could be does. in therapy for years, huh? Come <laughs> on. Get it out in the book, and 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 uh, people can identify with it. Probably see some of them themselves in there. You know, certainly uh, there's there's things in there that even I could relate to. And I'm a lot older than you. But oh my goodness, I have to tell you uh, one of the um, one of the things that you said. You were talking about Newfoundland, and you said the the land God gave to Cain. <laughs> I heard that last week from my brother, who's down in Houston, and <laughs> I was like, "What are you talking about?" He said, "Where you live?" I said, "I've never heard of this." And then I, I saw it in your book, and I'm like, "That's twice." Twice in a, in, in, a, in a couple of weeks, I've heard the same phrase. And I was like, okay, you know, just this, this kind of barren, you're condemned to this place. And I thought, oh, come on, Morgan. Don't, don't be so mean to was, us. <laughs> I, I didn't invent that. That was... I, no. I, I want to say John Cabot, but it might no, have been... It was Jacques Cartier. Jacques Cartier. There you go. Jacques oh. Cartier. Yeah, I had to go look it up then. I was like, okay, <laughs> what is this all about? Well, can and, you imagine uh, showing up, you sail across the ocean for like a month in a little leaky boat and you show see land and you're all excited and you get there and it's rough. February in St. John's. So. <laughs> or worse. I don't have things to say either. <laughs> yeah, Anyway, that's the second time I've heard it. And for people who are watching this who are not from here and are now thinking terrible things, it's great here. It's beautiful, stunning nature. And we've come a long way from the land, from the land God gave to Cain. But there's times where everywhere feels a bit like that, especially yes. now, especially now. But uh, 
And also, I thought you did one of the best jobs of depicting the Newfoundland language that I've ever seen. And I say seen because I had to look at it and go, holy smokes. And I'm from here and I'd be looking, okay, wait, now where's that word? <laughs> that was so good. I thought that was brilliant because I've struggled with how do you do the Newfoundland dialect and make it happen. But I think what you hit up on is brilliant because it does reflect like how certain people will talk extremely quickly and drop this and that and roll it. To oh, you did. I loved it. That was one of my okay. favorite things. Yeah. I, I don't know if it would stand up to the Mun linguistics department, but um, just the dialect, in, in the dialects, there's many of them in Newfoundland. Mm. They're so rich and wonderful and, and uh, quirky. And um, Naughty's a, a Newfoundland character and he's throughout the book and I didn't want to lay his accent on too thick and he's kind of a townie so townies kind of have a more proper yeah. accent such as it is. Um, so his, I toned down his, how many H's he drops and G's he drops and things a little bit so you can make sense of it. Um, but I think the, probably the part you're referring to is, is uh, Milton arrives in Newfoundland. Yes. He's on the run. And uh, he tries to get a taxi from the ferry to Newfoundland uh, yeah. or to St. John's. And uh, he meets Jerry, the taxi driver, who's it's like two pages long without a space or a breath. <laughs> and um, around the bay, you can meet characters who don't put very many spaces between their words and go pretty no, quick. No, for sure. I know when I had first moved back, I was just like two years going like, Oh, that's so funny. That's just amazing. <laughs> like, I think I laughed for two years straight. And and you really caught it because what I love was that he was so willing to give Milton this drive across the island. And then a week later, after Milton sneaked the money to him and he wasn't going to take it, you know, the money comes back. And I thought, you know what? Like, that is so possible. That is so possible. And and making sure he gets good grub and into someone's house. It's what it's like here. All yeah. that was so possible. You nailed it. I mean, you really did. The uh, oh, brilliant I comedian Andy Jones, um, I saw him at an event one time, and he was talking about uh, he was capturing the, the story of his family bought a old house as kind of a summer cottage out around the bay and he wanted to capture the history of this house because it had this family had lived there for generations and um he was talking about buying the house and he bought it from his friend and they were at the the i think the duke of duckworth pub downtown negotiating on the house and the price started at five thousand and and he would say i'll give you it's more worth more than that. I'll give you six thousand. His friend said, "No, no, I can't take more than four. And by the time they were done, he bought it for five hundred dollars or something. Because <laughs> Newfoundland negotiation is, is oh, it was so funny. It really, and I've seen that happen. Honestly, I have, and uh, you know, it's like it, they're very generous people. And 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 when someone's coming and new, like they just give them their shirt off their back. In in many cases, I gotta ask you. I have to ask this because it's on my mind using someone like Leonard Cohen in your book. And he's like the, the big uh, godfather of the Montreal mafia in this. And I'm like, geez, you had me looking that up. I was like, how do you do that? Like, you know, do you have to clear that with, with the, um, or do you well, just do it? Uh, <laughs> unluckily for Leonard and luckily for me, he passed away. <laughs> 2016 oh. i looked that up <laughs> so um i had conceived of using him as a character before he passed away um and but uh, apparently copyright laws change once you die and uh so i could get away with it where i've gotten away with it so far i haven't got a lawsuit yet but we'll see <laughs> i don't know well, maybe maybe um, i shouldn't have brought it up <laughs> no but but, but we had a lot of conversations with the editors and, and, and friends who have, I got to read it early drafts were all kind of, does it need to be Leonard Cohen? Should it be Leonard Cohen? I don't know about this Leonard Cohen. Um, Cause he's so beloved by so many people, but uh, oh, yeah. it had to be Leonard. But he's a poet. And I mean, Milton was there and he was the hero to Milton. So, I mean, anyway, we'll see what happens. I, 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 I kind of liked it. And, but it's not what I expected. It was, when is it going to meet? 
when is he going to meet Leonard? And that was not the way I expected. I hope we're not giving away too much. I hope we're just enticing people to want to read this. But, you know, when I talked to you yesterday, kind of uh, briefly, and I I know you've done so many interviews lately. And I, I was thinking, what can I, what can I ask you that maybe hasn't been asked? So, um, you said, well, you can try and surprise me. So, okay, what I'm going to ask you is what have you not told people? What about you don't we know? What have you not revealed in an interview to date? Do you have any rituals oh, or anything you could share? Writing related? Yeah. Uh, um, I'm, uh, that is a good question. Um, yeah, I should have given you a chance to think about it, but I didn't want to. No, it's good. It's good. Just, I, I, Challenged you to surprise me. You did um, challenge me. <laughs> one thing that I think not a lot of people know about the book is there's a lot of Easter eggs in it. Um, so if you know where to look or what to look for, you'll find certain things. But there's also a lot of like inside family jokes and things. So um, behind me, there's a which way are we? There's a drawing my brother did. Um, okay. and he, did, he was a my brother is my hero. He's an art school dropout. Uh, so he gave me that drawing and I put illustrations throughout the book and my brother used to be in a band in Red Deer, Alberta called Future Creature and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Oh yeah, yeah, but you can Mil see it. Milton takes a Future Creature t-shirt with him to Montreal and it has this drawing on the shirt. Um, so there's a whole bunch of little tiny uh, snippets and tidbits like that throughout the book. Um, which no one will ever get except my brother and maybe ah. my sister. So. But very cool. That's a very cool and very nice thing to know. And uh, I can't believe that we are almost out of time on this because it's been so much fun, but we're going to hop over onto Instagram anyway for a little bit longer. I want to mention that you're making furniture, but also I've been asking my writer um, guests because many of them have pets and you shared a few things. This is baby Mary with, the dog and cat. Cat the cat's Reggie, huh? Isn't it? That Reggie cat the cat? is Reggie, the ditch kitten. Uh, my wife and the baby were out for a walk and they heard him meowing in the ditch. And there was Peggy with her little frostbitten nose, a kitten just a couple weeks old. So she lives here now. Uh -huh. We also have another cat, Reggie. He's out of the frame okay. picture, but uh, Peggy is Reggie's best friend or Mary's best friend. And those are our chickens that Mary uh, looks after every day. <laughs> and you said, and I got to call you on this because you said they don't have names because they all look alike. Well, I have a very good friend who has a whole bunch of chickens. She's got them all named. I just want you to know that it is possible. They you have need names to now. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> when they were chicks, they all looked alike. And okay. Fair but enough. There's a, Thamela, Louise, Laverne, and Shirley, and Heidi are the five chickens. So Heidi no, likes like to hide. Uh, and my friend has one called Phyllis after Phyllis Diller because her chicken had this. I think Phyllis may no longer be with us, but she was a lovely chicken. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been so much fun talking to you. And Breakwater Books published your book. People can get that there. And I'll have links and things shared on this page. And um, we're going to have to wrap, Morgan. I kind of hate to do that because so I'm much. having so Bye. much fun. Talk. Yeah. But don't go away because we're going to hop over on Instagram for a minute. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And these shows are available on Katherine Taylor TV on YouTube. And share love with us and let us know where you're watching from. Thank you so much now. Goodbye from Let's Get Writing. Thank you.